following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. And good evening to another episode of Mindfulness in Modern Times. And I, we had the first two episodes previously in the previous two weeks. And with us, we have Greg Jacobson, who is also the, number, uh, the author of the number one best-selling book, Think Yourself Happy. And he's also a mentor to so many businesses. And he has been mentoring us the past two weeks as well. And we've learned a lot about life and the value of life and the, the decisions that we make, how it affects our life as well. Now, Greg... To start off this discussion, um, when we start off a day, you know that the morning plays an important role in carrying on the rest of the day. It does. And when you wake up in the morning and if you feel dull and there are so many problems at home, you're finding a way to go home, you need to prepare your lunch and you know that it's a stressful day at work today, but you still don't want to be stressful. What's the mindset that you should have? How can you think yourself happy in the morning? Well, I start out with a gratitude strategy every day. I'm super happy. As a matter of fact, I'm so happy this morning, and I just feel so lucky and so grateful just to be alive. And that's the first place I start. So when I wake up in the morning, I think to myself, I'm so lucky in so many ways. I don't think about the difficulties of the day, what the traffic that's gonna be there that we know is gonna be there anyway. Exactly. Why would we be upset about traffic that we know is gonna be there, or whether it's raining outside? or whether we're gonna have some challenges at work. Of course we are, but let's be grateful for what we do have. So I start out and I'm lucky enough to be married to an amazing woman. So I wake up in the morning and I'm just so glad to be next to her. I'm so glad to be in a nice clean bed with a pillow. I'm looking forward to a nice hot shower and a clean towel, and some breakfast. There's so many people in the world that don't have those things and I just, I feel so blessed just to be able to start my day that way. And I know a lot of people do as well. They start out with a, with a positive attitude in the morning and then they run into traffic as if they didn't expect it, but they had it yesterday and the day before and the week before and the month before and the year before. So why not be productive during that time and look around at what's so good that's happening in the world, not what's so difficult. And then as the day progresses, they have some challenges at work and maybe some challenges with, with coworkers, but be blessed of the people that you don't have challenges with, with the things that are flowing and going beautifully and looking forward to being home, being happy that you have a job. So many people don't have work at all. I'm, when, I'm, when I travel around the world, there's so many people that don't have anything. They just seemingly they don't even have a place to live. I mean, how grateful can you be? But I think so many people look at, the, at what they don't have and they long for those things instead of being grateful for the things that they do have throughout the day. And then I think they get to the end of the day and they watch news and for the most part, it's extremely negative. And then they look at the world and say, man, this is really a rotten place. Instead of seeing the, the beauty around them and looking at their beautiful kids and their beautiful spouse and, and just being grateful for what they have uh, even though there might be challenges in your life, you you got to get through them. That's part of what you go through every day. And then I think also that after that, they're they're so tired, they look back at the day and they look at the negatives that happened in the day and they think to themselves, is this worth it? Is this worth it? I got to go through this all again. And sometimes they think maybe this just isn't worth it. And I'm telling you, it is worth it. If It depends what you focus on. You get in life what you focus on. If you look at the joy and the beauty in life, that's what you'll, that's what you'll get and that's what you'll get more of. If you look at what's negative and what's horrible and what's wrong, that's what you'll see and that's what you'll get more of. Talking about this rat race, now the whole world, and especially in Sri Lanka, there is this competition where you know I have to be better than the next person. And so they find jobs, they earn their daily bread, but at the end of the day, we do jobs to make our life better. But That's the point. I mean, exactly. that's what you're supposed to be doing. But I think people just go through the grind of, uh, I've got to get through the day, got to get through the day, got to get through the day. And then at the end of the day, is it worth it? And rather than having the joy of 
I've got a great job, I'm enjoying what I'm doing, I'm in flow, I'm getting things done, I'm making progress, I'm helping other people. And instead of doing that, they're looking at, why don't I have more? Why isn't it easier? Why are things negative? And looking at things again in a negative perspective, rather than using perspective as a thing to leverage you to, to feel better. Now, for example, this is something I teach people that really changes their lives, just a, a really simple strategy. If people look at their life as having so many problems, this is a problem, that's a problem, this, that, the other, problem, problem, problem. But if you look and separate problems from challenges, I think that will really give you a new perspective and a new viewing of your life. And let me give you an example. A, a, a problem is something that you can't do anything about. So maybe you're, someone died or someone is very sick and has cancer. You can only take them to the doctor and the doctor can only do what they can do and the rest is up to a higher power. Those are problems. The rest are challenges. Anything that, that you can do something about is a challenge and an opportunity. So if you say to myself, yourself, my goodness, what's gonna happen today that's gonna be amazing? What opportunities are gonna meet me today that I can rise to that challenge? What amazing people that am I gonna meet? That's what you'll get in life. Everything that isn't a problem is a challenge. And if you look at your life in that way, you'll realize, and most people will realize, they don't really have a lot of problems. If they have any problems, that is too many, but you get through them. The rest are challenges, and the only people that don't have challenges or problems are the people in the graveyard. One major problem, Greg, is that, you know, people find it hard to balance between work and family life and personal time. And when they Great just come point. home, they're just tired and they just want to go to sleep. And when they wake up in the morning, they have to do the same thing all over again. Again, is it worth it? Now, in your life also, I believe uh, you told me the story that you were a businessman earlier and it oh, came yeah. to a point where you realized this is not worth it. And then you stopped. What Correct. can people do in order to realize this? Okay, this is not exactly the right thing for me. And then what can they do about it? Well, one of the things that I teach is that there is no work-life balance. I think people believe, and it's been taught so many times in so many different ways and said by so many different people, that it's a big misunderstanding, I believe, in the world. That you have your work over here, and your family over here, and you go to work, and you forget about your family, and then you go to your family, and you forget about your work. That's not how real life works, as we know. You take, home, you take your work home with you, and you think about it, and you... If there's anything going on at home, maybe challenges, you bring those to work and you lament over those. And you, you, uh, you have those thoughts in your head and you're not quite as productive. What I say is a work-life balance is bring your work home with you in a positive way. Talk to your family about what great things happened at work today. The people that, that are at your work, when you go home from, from home, when you go home to work, Talk about your family, show pictures of your family, say what's good in your life. And I think that you do both of those things. I think so many people believe that your family isn't interested in what you do. So you just go home and you don't talk about what you do. You keep work at work and you keep home at home. But that's not how things are supposed to work. You're supposed to enjoy all moments of your life. And I will get back to this because I think people have a tendency to believe that you're not supposed to be unhappy or you're always supposed to be happy. And that's just not true. You need to have the full experience of uh, emotions in life. But what I'm saying is go to work, enjoy work, do the best to focus on what's working for you and the challenges that you've overcome and the joys that you've had at work. Go home and discuss it with your family. Talk about it with your kids. Talk about it with your wife. And if you're having a difficult day, share it with them as well. Because they wonder why dad or mom comes home and they're quiet. They don't want to be present because they've, they've had an issue or a hard time. But they are your joy. Share it with them. You're supposed to share things with your family. Go home and share it with them and they'll be part of your joy. And then when you go back to work, bring your family with you. I don't mean physically, but I mean pictures and stories about what happened last night and share those with your coworkers because they're going to share them with you. And that brings joy to work. So you don't really have that separation. I think that if you enjoy your work life and your home life, then you're a very happy person all around. I think that's a very important point, Greg, as well, because all of us are taught 
as you said, don't bring work to home, don't take home to work. And that's, Terrible advice. That is terrible, I agree with you. And before we continue this discussion, we'll go into a short commercial okay. break. We'll be back soon. Welcome back to Mindfulness in Modern Times and we had a discussion with Greg and Greg, I think before the break, we spoke about a very important point of, you know, actually talking about work at home and sharing your home experiences with your work colleagues. And something that you mentioned was not only happiness, but people do experience unhappiness, frustration. Of course. And sadness. And We're supposed to. We're humans. We have a full range of human experience. We're supposed to experience all of it. I, I, you asked me off air, well, how am I happy all the time? And I, I wanted to, to let people know I'm not happy all the time, but I I'm easily get into happy. Sometimes I'll find myself frustrated. Let's say I'm watching uh, TV and I'm watching something and the internet goes out. And I think to myself, why is my Wi-Fi not working? And I th then I think to myself, what a an insignificant thing to get upset about. So even if it happens continuously, I can find something else to do. Maybe it's the universe telling me that I'm spending too much time in front of the television. But instead, you can get stuck in that and get stuck in that and get angry with all the little things that happen in life. And I'm saying that there's going to be frustration and disappointment and anger. You might lend money to somebody and they don't pay you back when they promise, even though that you're counting on that money. They're they, they're adamant, you just please help me out. I get paid on Wednesday and then Wednesday comes and they don't communicate with you. And then you call them on Thursday, they don't answer the phone and you're, you start to get angry. You can just say to yourself, you know what? Maybe that's a small price to pay to learn this lesson. You can frame it in a different way. And you can, and rather than being angry and going down into unhappiness and staying there and getting more angry and more angry and more angry thinking about it, you could say, Small price to pay, not a big deal. I've got better things to think about in my life. And then go up into well-being or up into happy. And once you're in happy, learn how to stay there and go higher into happy. You go out to dinner with friends. Okay, you had dinner with friends. Now you could say, you know what? You go home and say, God, that was a magnificent time. I had such a good time. I really want to spend more time with my friends. Then you text them and say, we had such a great time with you. I really am looking forward to doing that again. And you want to stay there as long as possible and enjoy all the moments and feel how lucky you are to have friends. Some people don't have any friends or they feel like they don't have any friends or they feel like their friends don't respect them or don't, they can't trust them or what have you. But if you have a small group of friends that you can count on, that can count on you, that's really some of the, the best juice of life that you could really drink from. And Greg also now fr feeling frustration can be very annoying at times because it sure. affects everybody else as well around you. Like especially, for example, if you take a mom or a dad who comes home after work and they've had a very bad day at work and they come home and the power is off. You don't have current at home and then their kids are screaming and apparently the husband or wife also has been having a bad day. And it's just bottling up inside of you. What advice can you give to like let this frustration go and enjoy that moment as you come home? Everybody has different ways of dealing with it. Again, I like to get back to gratitude and think of all the things that I'm grateful for that I do have in life and the things that, are, that I'm grateful for that I don't have in life. I don't have sick children. I, I, I'm not sick myself. Uh, I have a place to live. There are so many things that you can look at other people and, and say to yourself, I'm so glad I'm not in that situation. Because there are so many people that have seemingly everything and they're just unhappy. I was watching a, a television show, back to TV, we're on TV, so. Uh, and it was a, a Formula One race team. Now these people are wealthy. They're not rich, they're wealthy. They have tons of money. And there was a new, there was a race team that was taken over by a Russian oligarch who has, he's the largest, I think, fertilizer manufacturer in the world. And his son is a race car driver. But he, they're not a successful team. So the son isn't winning. 
He's coming in last or near last, so he's blaming it on the car, and he's feeling the pressure. These people have everything, but all they focus on or all they seem to focus on are the challenges that they're having that they think are problems. Oh, no, I didn't win a Formula One race. Well, what else in your life is amazing that you're overlooking? Quite a bit. So you come home in the dark, so play some games with your kids in the dark. Spend some time with your wife or your husband in the dark. That doesn't sound like a problem to me. That sounds like something that's lucky. So now you're not watching TV and, and hearing about wars and famine and, and things that are going on in the world that don't even affect you, but you feel them inside, which you shouldn't be watching before you go to sleep anyway. I think there's lots of things that you can do in the dark. And some people, it's okay to just scream into your pillow. Just get it out. Ah! And then it's done. Give yourself a time to be unhappy or angry or frustrated. And then when that time is up, say, okay, my time is over. I'm not frustrated anymore. For me, it's like 15 seconds. If I'm gonna be mad or upset, I've got it down to 15 seconds. I'm gonna be mad, I'm gonna be upset, I'm gonna be disappointed, but only for about 15 seconds. And then I'm gonna go back to some joy in my life. How it's does up that? To, it's, it's a choice. <laughs> it's a choice that we get to make. It's not, we are responsible for how we feel. So you need to learn the skills and take the actions to feel those things, either positive or negative. And if you decide, because it's all a decision, that you wanna be negative for longer, that's totally up to you. If you feel that you wanna be happier sooner, take those actions and you will have those results. I promise it's that simple. How does it work? Like, How do you switch emotions like that? 15 seconds? How I choose. I choose to do that. I say, okay, look, this is frustrating, definitely. Can I do anything about it? Yes, what can I do about it? I can change my attitude or change my situation. Sometimes you can't change the situation. If you're in traffic, for example, I'll, I'll be in traffic, I'm coming here, I tell the tuk-tuk driver, okay, make a left over here, okay, they, they give me the, the head nod, they, they go up to the corner and they say, right or left, sir. <laughs> I just told you left. Now, I can choose to think to myself, this person's just not listening to me. How many times more am I going to have to tell them? Or I can laugh about it and say, that is so silly. That's just such a silly thing. But you know what it takes to go left? I tell them again, go left. It's not a big deal. I think people tend to make a big deal out of things that aren't a big deal. Things that are a big deal, again, are problems in your life. And if you look at your life, you probably don't have a lot of problems. So if you look at it that way, you can be grateful for the problems that you don't have. All right, Greg. And now, as I said, just as your feelings and the feelings within yourself, frustration or sadness, is affecting other people as well, others' feelings are also kind of affecting you. Because if you feel that your wife or your kids are in a bad state, it might make you also feel upset about it. So how do you overcome That's true. that That's situation? True. So I take responsibility for everything around me, even things that maybe I don't even have a lot of influence over. But I say to myself, what can I do in this moment to make the lives of the people around me and myself even better? That's a question I ask myself all day long. If there's nothing I can do, how can I be frustrated about things that I don't have control over? So if someone is unhappy next to me, I ask them, what can I do to make you even happier right now? Is there anything specifically that I can do? I'll ask my wife all the time, hey, can I rub your feet? And sometimes she'll say yes, and sometimes she'll say no, but it makes her feel good that I'm willing to do something to improve her mood. The effort. Now, so many people are blaming and complaining that it's other people's fault. Everything is someone else's fault, they take no responsibility. So I was talking to somebody about their marriage, they said they have a terrible marriage, something, someone that I'm working with. And they say, my husband is such a jerk. He is just, it's, he's terrible. He doesn't care about me. He doesn't acknowledge me. And, and I'm, we're just fed up. I'm just like at the end. I said, really? Okay, so he's so bad. What is your culpability in this? How bad are you? Are you perfect in every way? Do you do everything? Do you talk to him kindly? And do you offer, or do you do as much as you can possibly do to make this marriage as great as it can be? I said, well, it's pretty much all his fault. I said, it's all his fault? Okay, maybe it's 10% my fault. So maybe you should work on the 10% that you can control. And then when the other person sees how much effort you put in, maybe they'll 
change how they do things. Maybe they'll change their attitude. And I'm telling you that it works 100% of the time. Now, it doesn't fix all of the issues that you may have, but communication is, is the key. If you go to someone and say, you do this and it's your fault that we're this, that, how is that going to make you feel? You're going to become defensive. If you say, listen, we haven't been as great as we could be. What can I do to be a better husband, to be a better father, to be a better person? Ask yourself that question and ask others around you, and you'll get the answers to that. And then take action on that. If you ask someone what they could do and they tell you and you don't take action, it just tells them that you don't care. So I think that communication is certainly one of the keys, is communication with yourself, like I said, in the mirror, and communication with other people. And then once you know what to do, take action on those things and ask yourself throughout the day, what can I do right now to make my life even better? And if you don't ask yourself that and you don't take those actions, how could you feel that it's somebody else's fault? You need to take responsibility for your own life and your own actions. You're 100% in charge of how you feel. And you reveal the way you feel by the things that you say and do. And by changing the things you say and do, you can change your feelings too. Okay, Greg. And as you said, in order to make another person feel good, do you think it's possible to imprint that happiness into someone else? Absolutely not. Now, you can show by example and you can share some strategies, but you can only go as far as offering that. You're not in control of anyone else. The only things you're in control of in life is yourself. Your actions, your thoughts, your words, your feelings, that, that's, that's it. Everything else is influence. And if you do the best you can for you, then you're full and you can overflow into somebody else and they see that you're doing what you can and you're living life the best life that you could live for yourself because it's not about comparing yourself to other people. They're having their own experience in life. You need to have the best experiences that you can and share that with others. And when they see that it's working for you, they may or may not take action to work for themselves. You are definitely not responsible for anyone else's happiness whatsoever. You can do what you can, but that's all you can do. And once you've decided this is all I can do, there's nothing else I can do, then it's totally up to them. All right, Greg. I think this is all the time we have for this week's okay. episode. We'll I, have to meet again I next hope that week. The, I hope that the viewers have understood what I'm saying and have decided that there's some action they could take immediately to improve their life. And I promise if you do any of these things, your life will get better. All right. Thank you, Greg. And uh, I'll hope to see you next week again. You will. Promise. Okay. And that was our episode on mindfulness in modern times. We'll be back again next week with another episode with Greg. I'm Suzanne Shinali. Stay safe and have a good night. Just in case if you couldn't watch this program on air, you can always rewatch on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash English. Stay safe and have a good night. <laughs>